Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. I have taken a good look at how GNOME behaves and how you can extend and tweak it with extensions and GNOME tweaks. I think it's time we take a look at GNOME's default applications. GNOME files. Nautilus, or GNOME files, is the default file manager on GNOME. It is pretty simple and has a very straightforward interface with bookmarks and places on the sidebar and a few options on the header bar, such as changing the view mode from icons to list, searching for files or folders, or a few simple sorting options and zoom level controls. You can obviously show or hide the hidden files or folders through the menu or by pressing Ctrl plus H, and it supports tabs. I found the breadcrumbs bar nicely done, but could not find any option to type in a custom path, which is a pretty huge missing feature in my opinion. The context menu offers options to show a file or folder's properties, opening it in a terminal window, or even restoring a previous version, which is a very nice feature to have. All in all, Files is a basic but sufficient file browser, apart from the lack of custom path input and a column view, which I find very useful when you dig down a convoluted file system. Drives also aren't shown at all times in the sidebar, which makes accessing them a bit of a pain. GNOME Photos Photos sports a dark theme to make your picture stand out a little more and supports online photo accounts, such as Google Photos from the online account settings. It has some very basic features, such as organizing your photos into albums, favoriting, as well as exporting, sharing through email, and I guess other sharing services I have not configured, and simple photo editing. Photos stored in an online account can't be modified though, which is a shame, and picture orientation does not seem to be handled well once you open a photo full screen. Compared to other available photo managers, such as the one offered on Elementary OS or Gwenview on KDE, it seems a bit too simple. But since I only need such a program to look at my pictures and basically do no editing whatsoever, it would probably be enough. More advanced users will find it a bit lacking though. No music. Music is, as its name implies, your music player on GNOME. It seemed a bit unstable to me, crashing once since I had imported my music library. I had to only copy a few files to make sure it would simply open, which is not a good sign. Once you're in, it sports a clean interface, separated into albums, artists, songs, and playlists. Controls are sleek and easy to use, but with very limited ratings, you can basically add a star or not. With the advent of streaming services, a dedicated music player on my desktop is not a must-have for me, but music was serviceable enough. GNOME Terminal The GNOME Terminal is the only GNOME app I could find that still sports a menu bar, which stood out in the middle of other header bar enabled applications. It has all the features you would expect from a terminal emulator, from profiles, character encoding support, tabs, and it also has a surprising number of configuration options in its preference panel allowing you to set the default size, the cursor shape, the color scheme, as well as switching it to dark mode and customizing the keyboard shortcuts. This might not be a necessary app for everyone, but GNOME Terminal is a complete and well-built package. GNOME Contacts This is the default contact manager from GNOME. It looks the part, with a sidebar and a panel displaying your contacts info. You can quickly add new details to each contact, which allows you to have an unencumbered view of the info this contact really has filled in. It also supports online accounts, so you can sync all contacts through here. It seemed a bit unstable, freezing every time I tried to add a picture to a contact. Also, it does not support contact groups, but you can favorite any contact you like. Contacts is a simple application, but it gets the job done. GNOME Software GNOME Software is your app store. It is pretty complete, allowing you to search, install and remove applications in a few clicks. It has a simple but pleasing interface, separated in three tabs, allowing you to see all applications and look for them, see your installed applications, and see all the updates for your system. App pages are detailed with screenshots when supported, descriptions, reviews, as well as a few other useful informations, such as the download size and the source, packages from the repositories, flatpacks, or even snaps. You can also choose the channel for snaps to switch from the stable channel to the beta, for example, Software also shows the license of the program, if it's free or not, and adds a tick near to the developer's name if it has been verified. It does not show your system libraries or non-graphical packages, so you'll need to use the command line or install another package manager if you want to do it graphically. All in all, GNOME software is a solid app and works well. GNOME Maps Maps is a simple program that shows you, well, maps. It uses OpenStreetMap, which is great, and supports road view as well as satellite view. You can look up any place you wish, and even get directions by foot, car or bike. 
You can also print the directions if you need to or if you don't have your smartphone at hand. A map application might not be a must-have since we almost all have Google Maps or other mapping applications on our phones, but it's still a nice addition to the GNOME software roster. GNOME Web This is GNOME's default browser, and incidentally, elementary OSs as well. Once called Epiphany, it has come a long way. GNOME Web has a very nice clean interface and supports tabs, of course, but also integrated ad and pop-up blocking, as well as, more importantly for me, Firefox Account Sync. It also allows you to add a website as a web app for quicker access, and has a simple download manager, as well as a bookmark library that lacks organization in folders, though. Performance is okay, if not spectacular. It used to only support 720p video playback on YouTube and other video files that use the VP9 codec, but this has been fixed in the latest versions, and Epiphany is now kind of a complete browser. The lack of support for extensions, and a little bit worse performance than Firefox or Chrome on specific use cases, might not make this your default browser, but it has come a long way and is starting to be very usable. GNOME Calendar Calendar is a basic app that has a few nice features. It supports online accounts, can add weather info, and supports a week, month, or year view. Events can be set to repeat, and you can add reminders to them with sound or not, as well as location details. It supports multiple calendars, and its interface is clean and simple. You can't configure anything, though, since it does not have any options menu, but then again, that's a recurring theme with most GNOME applications. There are plenty of other GNOME apps, such as GNOME Boxes, a virtual machine application, Events, a document and PDF reader, or GNOME Games, which handles installed games as well as emulated ones. You can also find GNOME Notes for quick, very simple note-taking, or even GNOME Builder, a very complete and actively developed IDE, which is ideal if you want to get started with GNOME development. I can't go into much detail about all the GNOME applications, but the GNOME software collection has an answer for almost all your needs. The only thing that bothered me is that all applications seemed a bit lacking in features, customization or preferences. I know it's the mantra of GNOME to be as simple by default as possible, but compared to the offerings on elementary OS for example, or on KDE, these apps seem to be in their infancy still. There were performance problems, crashes in some of the applications, and some of them lacked some features that you would expect in such an application. This is it for my video tour of GNOME applications. If you use a specific GNOME app regularly, please let me know in the comments so I can try it out. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!